Okay, we're ready for another exciting adventure of Science in Pajamas. We're going to continue our discussion today on genetics and Mendelian genetics. And I am going to apologize in advance. I can't really move around a whole lot right now because I have a puppy sleeping in my lap. Say hi, Ripley. Hi, guys. So I'm going to try not to disturb him but still get our education on for today. All right, so... <clears throat> so we were talking about Mendel and how he's the father of modern genetics. We talked about terms like heterozygous, homozygous, dominant, recessive, genotype, phenotype. Well, now we're going to put that into use by trying to predict the outcome of different crosses. So one of the best ways that we teach kids how to do that is by a means called a Punnett square. Now, a Punnett square is just a representation to kind of map out the possible possible genetic outcomes of a trait in the offspring of two parents. Yes, I know. I know. You don't like it when I'm on the floor and not playing with you. So, how a Punnett square looks is, well, it's square. So, I'm going to have... And then we're going to... So it is a four, or a two by two square, or kind of like a window. Imagine curtains hanging down. So how we do this is first we have to figure out what trait and what the parents are. So let's continue on with our talk about um, pea plants. So in pea plants, we said that tall is dominant and short is recessive. So if I have a heterozygous plant, that means its alleles are big T, little t. Now, even though I didn't say heterozygous dominant, heterozygous tall, I know automatically the phenotype should be tall because heterozygous in this case, where we have a dominant and a recessive allele, Heterozygous means we're going to follow the dominant trait. So the phenotype is going to be tall. I already know that. So I have a heterozygous plant. It's tall. I'm going to put one allele on the top of each column. So one allele on the top of each column. And let's say I have a short plant. Now, short is recessive, which as we said, that means we need two recessive alleles to express the short gene. So, I'm going to put two small t's on the left-hand side of the Punnett square. And the reason why we do that is because, remember, Mendel came up with this idea of the law of segregation, which says that during meiosis, we are going to separate the alleles, the homologous pairs of chromosomes, so that only one is passed on to the offspring from each parent. So by putting these over their own columns, we are symbolizing the separation of these two alleles and showing the possibilities of them being passed on and the probabilities of them connecting with each of these two alleles from the other parent. Again, they're in front of their own column to symbolize the separation during meiosis. All right, now how we do this is we bring the big T down and put it in each one of these boxes. So I'm just simply gonna bring that down. So we have big T, big T, and then I'm gonna bring this guy across to finish up that box. So little t to bring this one across to finish up little t here i'm going to bring the little t down and put it in each one of the boxes and just like how i brought this guy over i'm going to bring him all the way over to here this guy's going to come all the way over to there so that means for our offspring we see two possible genetic outcomes we see an outcome of big T, little t, and that is one, two out of four boxes, 
So two out of four boxes or 50% chance of the offspring being heterozygous. So the offspring has a 50% chance of being big T, little t as their genotype. We see another genotype possibility, little t, little t. And that is one, two, again, two out of four chance or 50% chance of being little t, little t. So that's the probabilities of those genotypes. Now we can take this one step farther and figure out the probabilities of their phenotypes. So big T to little t would be tall, so it's 50% chance of being tall. Little t, little t is short, so that means it's a 50% chance of being short. So the offspring of this particular cross have a 50-50 chance of being tall or short. All right, so far so good. Well, let's do another one. Yeah. Oh, that folks are so cute. All right. So we have our cross, our Punna square. And now let's say maybe this time we have two heterozygous parents. So they're both tall because they're heterozygous. So we have big T over one column, little t over another. Big T in front of one, little t in front of the other. All right. So if we look at this first box, this T comes down, this T comes over, and we are left with... <sighs> So big T down, big T over, T, big T, big T, a homozygous dominant genotype. If you look at this one here, big T comes down, this little T comes over, we have heterozygous, big T, little T. If we look over here, the little T comes down, but the big T comes over, and we Always put the dominant letter first because it's the one that will be shown. It is the allele that is going to be expressed. And then here we have little t come down, little t come over. And we have homozygous recessive, little t, little t. So let's break this down to what it means. All right, so we have three possible genotypes here. We have... Big T, big T, big T, little t, little t, little t. So we have one big T, two big T little t's, and one little t little t. So that's one fourth, two fourths, and one fourth. So in other words, we have a 25% chance of being homozygous dominant, a 50% chance of being heterozygous, and a 25% chance of being homozygous recessive. However, unlike last time when we saw that the genotype and phenotype percentages were the same, we're not gonna see that for this one. And the reason is because we have two different possibilities for dominant expression. So to show a dominant trait, you need at least one dominant allele. Well, we got one, two, three boxes that have at least one dominant allele. So that means to show the expression of tall, I don't know why I'm trying to cross that. We just need one dominant T. All right, well, three out of four boxes, or 75% of the offspring will show that. One out of four boxes has no dominant T's. So that means that would be short. And like we said, that's just one fourth, or 25% chance of the offspring being short. 
So I hope that this has helped you to understand a little bit more. And if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in our Google Classroom. Until then, stay well, stay healthy, and even Ripple says, Stay well, you guys. Bye. It's nap time. Bye-bye. All right, you guys. Until next time.